Hello. If you are like me, you are really frustrated by the rising price of fuel and very uneasy of what the future holds for the U.S. as we surely are going to be paying $6 a gallon for gasoline by the summer of 2009. It seems as if the U.S. government has little or no interest in intervening or implementing any solutions in the near foreseeable future. We constantly hear nonsense media reporting on how this or that is affecting the price of oil and food, but if one were to really look further into what's being said, you'd know it's all smoke and mirrors. Come on folks, have you not figured out that the media will say just about anything they are fed from the so-called experts without even doing any investigative reporting? We are reaching the day and age where unlike the old days, no matter how many times a lie is told, it'll never become a truth. People are cynical about the U.S. government and its future, as well as the world. Flagrant squandering of shady business dealings to line the pockets of the rich, politically connected, and influential people of the world can and will not sustain itself. If things continue as they are for the next few years, we will see a collapse of the U.S. economy and will be at the beck and call of foreign nations to bail us out. You can bet there will be a hefty price to pay for any foreign economic bailout. How much longer are you willing to be told what type of fuel you will use in your cars, what type of cars you will buy, and how you must conduct your life so that huge corporations can remain in power to sell you their products? Corporate America knows very well what it takes to stay in business in the U.S., and the government officials rely on their corporate money and influence to stay in office. In other words, when you speak of one, you really are talking of both. They are deeply connected, and most Americans are starting to realize this. But let's not focus our efforts on the problem. Let's talk about solutions, real solutions. What am I really here to tell you about is there is an easy and viable solution to fix the U.S. economy that could be easily implemented today if the public was educated and demanded it. Large U.S. corporations that tend to dictate our U.S. governmental policy are not interested in supporting the solution because it takes current control and profits from them as well as threatening many industries that depend on current energy and fossil fuels. This presentation contains solutions that have been known about for over a hundred years but have been shut down by the large oil companies of the 20th century and DuPont over 70 years ago. I'm here to tell you that the internal combustion engine was originally designed to run on alcohol and Henry Ford of the Ford Motor Company was pushing for the use of alcohol for fuel at the turn of the 20th century because it was a much cleaner fuel till they were undersold by a crude oil waste product called gasoline. The oil refining industry had to dispose of what was left over, called gasoline, so they could afford to give it away if needed. But by pricing it just low enough, it forced the farmers who were producing alcohol for fuel out of business because they were not going to make alcohol for free. I'll bet you didn't even know that farmers made alcohol for fuel over 100 years ago, and you'd be even more surprised to know that they did not make it from corn. In fact, Corn is probably one of the worst crops to make alcohol from, and we'll discuss that further later. If the American public was to band together and push the U.S. government into implementing a nationwide alcohol for fuel program, no one would have to buy any new vehicles, and for about $300, every internal combustion engine on the road could easily be converted to run on alcohol, E85, and standard gasoline with the flip of a switch. And for a little bit more, so could all diesel engines be converted and run on an alcohol diesel blend. Furthermore, if we were to cultivate the right crops, not corn, it could all be done without touching any existing food sources, including agricultural land. And on a national scale, as in Brazil, alcohol can be produced for as little as 50 cents a gallon wholesale, which should result at about $2 per gallon at the pump. The worst thing about the solution is the American government even implemented an alcohol for fuel program back in World War I and II. So why have they not implemented this solution today when we are fighting wars over fuel? People, wake up. Your government is not naive about its history or its solution. They are just doing business as usual. The business of corporate America. This is a two-in-one presentation, audio and text. The text in the background is in much more detail. This is intended to bring awareness to how alcohol could and should be used as gasoline in our automobile engines as well as a 50-50 alcohol biodiesel blend for diesel engines with little or no problem whatsoever from many things other than corn and sugar cane today, not by 2012 as the public has been misled for the past several years. 
You will hear from experts on how alcohol can be used as gas and why the hemp plant needs to be legalized and used vastly, as together alcohol as fuel and hemp fiber could heal the planet. Very few people know that with a few simple modifications to any post-1985 automobile, truck, or diesel engine, we could actually see gas mileage improvements of up to 20 to 25 percent as alcohol is a much superior fuel to fossil fuel. The last part of this presentation is about how industrial hemp should be used as a feedstock for making alcohol because it is the number one source of producing biomass available on the planet. We will discuss further the elaborate suppression of hemp and the history and truth about the need for this plant today more than ever and its many uses that could help the nations of the world reverse global warming within five to ten years. How you ask? Because when you grow your own fuel and carbon-based resources from plant life, you take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere instead of increasing carbon dioxide like that from crude oil and most synthetically patent technologies. Most people do not know that anything that can be made from crude oil can be manufactured from the hemp plant or cellulose. In fact, Henry Ford had a refinery plant in Iron Mountain, Michigan in the 1900s and could make anything that was currently being made from crude refining, including plastics from cellulose. In fact, the very first plastics ever made were made from cellulose, but most people of today still believe that without oil we could not have plastics. Are you starting to get a sense of why hemp was made illegal in the U.S. to cultivate? Where did all the oil refineries of the early 20th century begin? Where do most of the companies that hold crude oil patents reside or originate? Why do all other major industrial nations cultivate hemp? If you understand U.S. politics, you know why. What most people don't know about alcohol for fuel is that we do not have to use corn, wheat, rice, or any food source to make it. In fact, corn is not even close to the best crop to make alcohol. There are two methods of breaking down biomass into starches to make alcohol from cellulose that have been available for years. One is acid hydrolysis, which has been known about and used for over 100 years by farmers. And secondly, genetically engineered termite enzymes currently being produced by an American and Canadian company for less than 30 cents a gallon for more than four years. Brazil has just recently developed a weak acid hydrolysis method which through government subsidies can now produce alcohol for less than 50 cents a gallon wholesale. There is no reason why we or any nation should be held hostage by greedy U.S. energy corporations or foreign oil cartels and forced to pay more than two dollars a gallon for any polluting fuel. Our current government needs to be held accountable for allowing this flagrant corruption to continue. We have reached a point in history where the public and citizens of the world need to stop letting our governments and large corporations dictate to us what future they want us to participate in. You need to start questioning what you are told and stop accepting the media and policymakers coverage or political speeches as truth, the Americans naiveness or laziness and looking further at what is being said is why the US is the only industrialized nation in the world that is not currently cultivating hemp. Why hemp? because it is the number one biomass producer in the world and produces four times more cellulose than trees. It can be grown practically anywhere in the world. Did you hear me? Anywhere in the world in almost any soil. What does that mean? You do not have to use agricultural land to produce it and it requires absolutely no chemicals or fertilizers to cultivate and it can be grown from the bottom of the South America to the northern parts of Canada or from the tip of Southern Africa to Finland. Steve Rawlings, the highest ranking officer in the U.S. Department of Agriculture in 1989, who was in charge of reversing the greenhouse effect, was interviewed by Jack Herr and Maria Farrow and agreed that hemp was the only plant on earth that could reverse the greenhouse effect by eliminating deforestation. It could easily supply the world with all the fuel and energy needs without touching any of the current agricultural land whatsoever. We would no longer need coal, nuclear energy, or fossil fuel if we just legalized and cultivated hemp for the feedstock for producing fuels. Hemp produces five times more alcohol per acre than corn. Many other crops like sugar beets, tubers, switchgrass produce much more alcohol than corn here in the U.S. and Northern Hemisphere. Why aren't these crops being used? Is there some kind of hidden agenda? By using corn